<laughs> You're getting raped by Adidas. <laughs> Dear God. You guys are all yes, from Joburg, right? Yeah, we we actually based on the East End, Boxburg side. The Hardy Dogs in Durban aren't that fucking loud. I'm not sure why, but I'm grateful. From all the curry, that's why they can't fucking scream. <laughs> that's <laughs> all right, guys. So, well, welcome to to Sludge Underground for the first time. It is a blown word. I've been excited to speak to you guys for quite some time, as I, I think right. the first time I'm having a chat with you guys to my soul was. About a year ago, actually, it's been it's oh, really? been a while. It's been waiting to happen, so I'm really oh, really yeah, psyched yeah. to have a chat with you guys. And yeah, yeah we're guys, super keen. We're yourself, always in the mood to talk some cock. That's good. Same. Good, you're in the right place then. Yeah, great. Let's do it. So introduce yourselves one by one. What you do in the band, and we'll take it from there. So I'm my name is Tian Enslin. I'm the frontman of the band. Yeah. I'm 25 years old. And I sing. So, I'm the drummer from the band. I'm Martin Enslin, and I'm six. Ach, I'm fucking eighteen. Been eighteen. <laughs> <last month. laughs> I'm Trevor. Uh, I play bass in the band, and I'm twenty-three years old. We we do I have. That, a, I love that you guys with... gave your ages like it's a Tinder bio. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Yeah, never, never know indeed. So we do have a, we do have an, a, another band member. His name is Brandon, and um, he's our rhythm guitarist. Unfortunately, he won't be joining us today. Um, he's got some personal things to sort out on this lovely Saturday. So three to four okay. reviews is more than enough. Otherwise, it gets a bit out of hand sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Blumer can get out of hand quick. <laughs> you just give it some time. <laughs> How long, how long have you guys been a, a functioning band as Blowmood? When did you guys start out? So, me, Trevor, and Martin, we are all, we're, we're all three brothers. And um, we've been playing music and doing, like, experimenting with sounds and things for as long as I can remember. We, we grew up in the same room, like, half of our lives. And, and then we met Marcel. Oh, we saw a video of him on Facebook, shredding some tunes, and then... We, about a month prior to that, we decided we're going to start a band just because we want to start a band. And then we, I went and saw my, uh, Marcel and I met up after work and uh, he didn't even audition for the band and we just fucking joined and we just made some beautiful noise since then, dude. That's fucking fantastic. I thought it was my turn to feel like I was proper stoned because I realized that like there were some matching surnames here and I was like, hmm, I want to like this <laughs> Something, something comes with the like, sort of the best of dynamics because like there's always like the, the other two members are always like yeah um, do they kind of stay out of the sibling squabbles or do you not really have that? No, we are, we always have sibling squabbles. I mean, any siblings have squabbles with each other. <laughs> um, it can happen like fucking now, but uh, no, dude, they like <laughs> they super chilled. Like <laughs> it just works out perfectly. I feel like the older brother because I am the eldest in the band. But um, no, fucking, we get out of hand eat, like all of the fucking time. We just you get on with it and carry on but with what we're doing, you know. Quickly. Yeah, that's hilarious because I've also I've also been in a like a, a sibling band where I was the only one who wasn't a, a actual sibling, so I understand the the dynamic as well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's that's great. So you guys you guys have all been doing music for for a long time as as siblings. You've been making music. And is Blowmode like the first band that you guys put together and have been going forward with? Or were you guys doing other sort of live music projects like that? Or was Blowmode your first sort of live experience? No, Blowmode was the very first band that we started. We didn't have a name in the beginning, but that was something we sorted out like when we Almost instantly. And... But it was quite cool because, I mean, for the first band, our first band, we figured out a lot of shit in the early stages of starting Blowmode. We started figuring out our sound very quickly and just things started growing from there, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you guys have, for like a, for your first band coming together, you guys have definitely made a lot of waivers coming in. I mean, I've seen you guys all over social media. I'm super stoked with your music. You've got a, your recordings out, you've got music videos, and it's fantastic. Like, you guys are doing a hell of a good first start. Thanks. Who's, yeah, who's I mean, who's, who's responsible for that? Who's the who's the brains in the the outfit? Is it just like a a, a group push, or 
is there someone who has been with that that drive with that solid push uh, i think uh, we all like putin uh, our brand <laughs> putin say what are the best options to do and then we take it from there but i mean there's a lot of thinking that goes into things like this we all we've we've all decided that if we if we're going to do this we're going to do it right and and if something happens we make sure that it's something fucking cool or we leave it right there no that's 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 good to hear like the, the fact that it's a group effort makes it even even better that's <laughs> that's amazing yeah i mean i work in the film industry so with music videos and things like that we basically sort we always we've got all the right contacts for everything it's it's like everything works out and it's perfect timing so it's just it's fucking great and then like, so obviously you guys being Afrikaans and being a, an Afrikaans rock band that is in itself it's it, like let, let, let's be honest a lot of Afrikaans music can be very a very stif- stereotypical type of sound and you guys yes. don't have you, you guys don't have that stereotypical sound it's actually very interesting to listen to and you said you you guys obviously sorted that out very quickly it was a sound that you went for so who would you say was your inspiration as as artists you know that you you looked at when going in and did you also go into it thinking that we want to sound different to other Afrikaans artists and that kind of thing I mean having an identity is like one of the most important things for Blomer I think Blomer always speaks the truth and we try and uplift through music so it's it's a lot different from all the Afrikaans stuff that happened over the last 10 years you know and um we just want to start something fresh and just be fucking good at what we do you know no that's that is entirely understandable who would you say you guys look up to where is your your sort of inspiration from i mean every everyone in the band has their own inspirations and stuff they listen to but i mean i speak for myself when i say the beatles is the best band ever john lennon is the best frontman ever and i just take a lot of inspiration from the fab four just just works you know and the other guys who 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 do you guys look up to who's your inspiration in making music I mean, I'm a very big Nirvana fan. fan. So it's so a lot of fun fun now. And I've grown a lot in that. And I've listened, listened to a lot of stuff that had boosted me like Oasis, Oasis and Stone Roses and stuff, and stuff like, like that. So I'm a very old school, school type of man, man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> type of man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's good though. Like, you can draw inspiration from just about anywhere, let's be honest. And like, yeah, you know, I mean, you it can... happens all around us. That's good. No, that is definitely good. And who was it who hasn't spoken? I think it's Trevor who hasn't hasn't said his his inspirations uh, yet. Um, my inspiration is actually Twenty One Pilots. Okay. Um, just the way that uh, Josh Dan on the drum. What's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, just fucking genius. No, definitely. Like they're, they're, they're songwriting, they're structuring how their music comes together. And just the fact that they're mad talented artists as well and musicians. Like it's, it's yeah, no, I agree with you 100% on that. Well, those are, those, like you were things. saying, those are very, very different inspirations and like are not the kind of inspirations that I would expect considering how, how blown it sounds, which is it's cool. Like I, I like how you guys have taken things that inspire you and made something completely sort of new and fresh out of it. That's, that's crazy. I mean that's music you know like the Beatles only played songs that they heard in the in their record collections you know and things that inspired them so I mean all the things we listen to each and every band maybe everything comes together and we create something special no that's, that's cool so let's, let's talk a bit about your your music as as a whole like you know what what kind of stuff do you guys typically write about like I, you know I've seen the the two music videos this okay and yeah we get yourself yes and you know, like you said, you guys try and uplift through music, so that obviously comes through in those sort of songs. What this uh, this okay? What's what's that song about? What was the the story that you guys were trying to tell there? So with this okay, I think it was hard lockdown level five. Family member and close friends of mine went through the same thing in lockdown, where they've lost someone very special to them, or you know, like fucking heartbroken and all those things and i don't know you know the, these type of songs just write themselves you know you'll sit and think about all these events that happen and then all of a sudden you just come up with all these lyrics i mean marcel came to my house and we chatted about everything and he just wrote 
He just played the guitar and all these lyrics just came out flying. But I mean, after that, everything just came together, you know? Uh, that's, that's beautiful. That, that really is. You can't force like music in that sense. And no, you can't. Having it, having it flow and having it come naturally, it makes it so much more relatable. And it, I'm, I'm not Afrikaans myself. I do understand it. I can't speak it. Uh, I found that incredibly emotional and very well done, especially the way that the, the storytelling works in the music video itself as well. Like, Thank you so much. Well done. I've had a ball watching you guys sort of progress from the get-go. I think it was uh, Matthew from the Threes and Sevens who actually introduced me to you guys when we interviewed them. It, funny enough, is because... He, because we were both named Marcel. So if anyone is confused, there is a different Marcel that is in this band as well. I am not speaking to my own band like I don't know them, just to clarify. <laughs> Stranger. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone who's listening, there are two Marcels who play guitar in this. There's a quite a few of us, actually. But that yes. would be trippy. So, <laughs> <laughs> would be i think my favorite experience is i ran into a guy in durban also named marcel smuts who happened to also play guitar which is very strange what what are your your future plans for for blow mode like what's, what's happening at the moment with the 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 restrictions easing up and what do, what do you guys have in mind what what's what are you working towards at the moment so i mean lockdown helped blow mode in a sense of we had some time to think about the quality tunes we want to write and what we want to present to the public and, and how we want to portray Blomer to the world. You know, so Blomer, Blomer is kind of fucking mull because we just, everywhere we go, we just break shit down and we fucking bad shit crazy, but, but with good attitude, you know? I mean, the future plans obviously is to, to be the biggest fucking band ever and write the best music ever and just expand, you know, just learn as an artist and find yourself and just write some quality tunes, you know. So, so lockdown actually helped Blow Mode in a big way of we spent some time thinking about how the sound of Blow Mode should sound like and what and how Blow Mode should be portrayed out to the world. And, you know, oh, oh, that's what we thought. That. And then lockdown came and changed everything. So we had a bit of time to write our debut album, which we're still busy writing, by the way. And we just, we, we just decided on taking our time and finishing with a quality product and then just fucking smashing shows and just trying to fill up stadiums. We just don't give a fuck. We just want to go and play for everyone because that's what it's about. No, I can completely so, relate to that. There's something about live music that is just, there's nothing quite like, there's nothing quite like it. Just watching it or performing it or anything like that, nothing beats the live experience. Exactly, and I mean, it's just a rush. Yeah, it's, a, it's a bit hard to step back and be like, cool, we're going to focus on this now. I can, I can completely relate to that. Like, it's, it's a difficult thing to do at first. Yeah, it is. It's very difficult. But I mean, you just have to take some time and sit and think and just be open to anything because then you'll write some honest music, you know? You can't just write about fucking everything. Well, you can, as long as it's the truth. So I, I want to touch on something. Uh, Trevor, Trevor plays drums, is that correct? No, Martin plays drums. Martin, okay. And who, who was it who said that they were 18? That's Martin. Martin, okay. So I had the, the, the right instrument and the right <laughs> age is the wrong name. Yeah, okay, yeah so but you, there's you a guys, lot of Martin. You guys started around about, what, it was about two, three years back, if I'm not mistaken? Two years ago. So, uh, Martin, how was it trying to, to balance in a band that was starting to now take off and then balance still being in school at the time? Well, it was exciting, you know. I was in home school then, so I had the time okay. for everything, and I could do the stuff that we did. So it was exciting and fun to experience everything on that type of age. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can imagine. At least, like, you know, if, by doing homeschool, it wasn't too much of an issue of having to, to worry about going yeah, to school the no next day kind of thing. All. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And yeah, with, with the, the three of you, like being a trio in the band, like what well, what are your parents' sort of thoughts on it? Is it something that they encourage? Is, is I mean, music they are very supportive. They... they they like everything we do. Like they 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 are just very supportive about everything. You know? They they also enjoying this crazy bloomer journey because it's gonna get fucking mal. I promise you that. <laughs> 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 Now, Tian, from like just watching the, the music videos and stuff like that, I can see that you are 
you know, a performer, you've got like a very good vibe as a, as a front man. Is that something that you sort of cultivated over time as do, doing blow mode? Or is it just something that's always been a past, part of your personality? You've always just been like a, a flashy person with these kind of things. You know, like I've always been the center of attention, not in a bad way. You know, I've always been around people and people always want to hear what I'm doing and what I'm, you know, people always ask for my opinion. So in a way, Blomert gave me the platform to try and figure out who I can be on stage and be the same person in real life as well. You know, like fucking the, the way Blomert performs on stage is the way Blomert performs off stage. You know, we're the same people. We're all fucking crazy and young and just living life to the fullest. You know, there's no time for sitting and waiting for things to happen we don't wait for the door to open we fucking kick it down oh man i love it i love that analogy <laughs> <It's so crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> like, your, your, your whole band can just be summed up in get shit done like that yeah dude i mean <laughs> why, why are we fucking here you know and you were saying that you work in the the film industry and whatnot so yes. break that down about me like are you doing videography do you what what is it that you actually do in the music the, the film industry so i work in the art department so i work for an art director i'm his assistant and we are direct tv tv sets and music videos and stuff i'm also a model on the on the back side of the camera and um i do my own ads as well and i met him on one of uh, a toyota ad i did for the rugby world cup in japan not too long ago and then I was I was working in the financial industry and I was fucking it was hectic because I'm not that type of person, you know. And then yeah, dude, it was like in a in a few days I left my quit my job and I just started working in the film industry, dude. And it's amazing. I love it. No man, that's that's fantastic. And the, the other guys, what are you guys doing outside of of Bloomworth? Is this is that sort of taking up all your time at the moment? What what are the other guys doing outside of the band? So I'm also working in the film industry. He's actually my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that, 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 that's cool. And like, obviously those sort of connections are what help with your, the, the quality of the music videos and stuff like that. Do you, do you script your music videos? Are you the one who sort of writes out the plot and the, the kind of the storyline and makes it, you know, that has the influence on how the final product is going to turn out? Yeah, I mean, we always try and think ahead, you know, and then just just to prevent the whole event from being a total flop. But um, we kind of wing it all the time because then you get a raw performance and, you know, and we also enjoy our own music, you know, so it's not hard for us to fuck out on the music video to our own tunes. It's fucking lack it. <laughs> and then uh, tell me a bit more about the Before the Dollar music video that was just a, a snip like snippets of a whole bunch of different things with it like was there any specific like reason behind the choices and clips that we used or was it just something to just capture the most fucking batshit crazy experience kind of thing yeah that's what before today is you know i mean before today is is just fucking crazy events happening in one small time frame and just people enjoying themselves it's fucking mild all well, this mild so we just started incorporating that into a video with before today and we enjoyed it <laughs> Well, based on your guys' whole motto of just when, whenever Blomworth is involved in anything, it just goes crazy. I'm assuming those, death, those deep breaths are necessary. Yes, of course. All the time. We all need to um, get our space back. And then when we come back together, it's like a connection that we had with each other and it just goes forth. It never gets lost. Like It's always there. We, we can be apart from each other for, for a week or more, but when we get back to each other again, it's like, it's like we never left, you know? No, that is, that is good to hear. It's kind of like riding a bike, never really goes away. Yeah, Just this sorry. bike is fucking fast. Fast as fuck, boy. So, like, yeah, when, when we got really cut off by, by load shedding, we, we'd covered a couple of topics. We'd covered you know, just how you guys approach your music, the, the music videos, the work ethic that you guys have. And, you know, we, we spoke about a couple of things and, you know, to own that you work in the, you know, the, the industry itself and the, the, the film industry. It's, it's been up and down, but I'm enjoying it, you know. It's, it's part of my ethos now. It's creating things and 
just seeing them evolving into something crazy, you know, it's just part of life. It's quite cool. There, there was something that I, I, I thought to ask you guys, you know, Bloomwood being like a, a, a rock band and, you know, sort of in your photo face and high energy. What would you say is like each of yours guilty pleasure in music? That, that one song that doesn't necessarily fit the, the vibe or the image that you, you generally p- portray or that someone would kind of be shocked that you, you enjoy listening to. <laughs> That'd be hip hop, man. We love the old school Tupac and, and notorious B.I.G. Yeah. stuff, you know, like that stuff was fucking crazy back then. And it still is, you know, there's some crazy hits out there. They were phenomenal. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't actually see that one coming. Like, it was, Big, <laughs> Biggie Smalls is like the best fucking, fucking rapper king. ever. Yeah, he's the real king. But I mean, Tupac was also great, you know, just depends on the mood. Well, music is mood. Like it's, it's something that, you know, you, what, what you're going to listen to is heavily going to be based on what you're feeling or it's going to make you feel some type of way. Yeah, I just enjoy good music, you know, just something that makes you move, you know, something that makes you feel, just something that gets your attention for a moment and you just stay into that moment for a little while. That's quite fucking cool. That's That music has the ability of doing those things, you know, nothing else. Actually, it should be but, free. To feel some connections with us, what we're feeling, and just to be free, man. Like, it, it's very important for, for people these days to, like, just escape out of something, you know, because we, we're in a generation where technology has taken over the world and people are spoiled with choice. So when it comes to Blomert, Blomert is something different. Blomert is something that evolves. Blomert is, is something that creates and destroys at the same time. We totally fucking mull and super chilled at the same time. It all depends on on your outlook on things, you know? We just hope people find the truth in our music and just realize that there's a lot more than just staying in front of your screen and all those things. I know that that's our platform of promoting ourselves, you know? That's the only way of doing it these days, but there's still a life to be lived, you know? To, be, to live. There's still... There's still clouds outside, stars to see all that shit. You know, we need to embrace those things before they go away. Yeah, you know, it, it is the, the place where you market yourself, but it also isn't. It doesn't capture the the essence of who you are. You know, exactly. it's still, it's you know, it's about live music. It's about that feeling. It, there is no other feeling. And yeah. it will never die. It, it it always comes back. You know, it's it's the it's the idea. It's the lifestyle. It's the it's the mindset. Everything. I mean, it, it serves its purpose. Like, yes, yeah, someone's going to be sitting in front of their screen and hopefully they, they find you that way. And that brings them out to a show to experience something new, to experience a, a feeling. And like we, you were saying, to connect with you guys and to connect with a, a feeling that they either didn't know they have or something that they hadn't felt in a while. Well, us as Blimey don't give people a choice to connect with us when they come to shows. They just fucking have to because we... We just pump with shows. <laughs> we love playing live and we love feeding off people's, people's energy. And we're young. We're just fucking ready to do this shit, you know? What's it also sort of ethos on the, you know, you know, you say you feed off the, the energy of a crowd and you feed off the energy of the people who are there. Uh, what, what's, what's, what's kind of your thoughts on, you know, sort of having a, a dead crowd or a minimal crowd? You know, you, you still give it your, your all. You still... You know, if that's the case, then you, you feed off the energy from each other. Or how, how do you guys approach those sort of situations? You have to, man. You have to give it your all every fucking day. Every time you wake up, the moment you open your eyes, you have to give it your all. You have to just try and better yourself every time. You just have to keep on keeping on, you know? That's that's completely understandable. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. If there's, there were only 12 people at the last supper. So, I mean, if, <laughs> if there's 12 people or less at a gig, we'll just fucking play if they're the last people on earth, you know? That is probably <laughs> one of the best outlooks to have. It's the way we live. That's Blomer. Now, with you guys being so so crazy and so energetic, I'm sure you've had some some moments on stage, some, so, like, some less than ideal moments where something completely unintended happened. Like, uh, you, you guys interested in sharing any of those moments? Yeah, I've chipped a tooth with a mic before. I, it's still oh, chipped. I fixed crazy. it before. I, I fixed it, but I chipped it again. I think I passed out one time, but it's just because I was a bit too drunk and a bit too stoned and the show is completely <laughs> mold, but it was lacquer. Just crazy shit happens all the time and we, we just like it, you know? 
bottom. Yeah, of the it's lacquer. <laughs> so when you say you chipped your tooth and you chipped it against a microphone, um, I'm just thinking of the sound that that would have made. Is that something that managed to come through? Or was it just too crazy for anyone to pick it up? Did, like, did anyone register what had happened? No, just it felt like a grandpa powder in my mouth. It didn't taste like grandpa, but really you know they're like that fine powder in your mouth. And I just knew, okay, okay. fuck, I just lost a tooth. I immediately panicked because, I mean, losing a tooth <laughs> is fucking hectic. I'm sure I'm going to look like a true box burger then. I'm just joking. I, I had it fixed. And then like a week after that, I chipped it again. So I just left it now. It's part of my look. I like it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got a, it's a good story. If someone asks you what happened there. I've had a tooth break and it's a sift feeling. It's not like I know that, that was a good description. It's not, it's not a great feeling. It's cock, but it's okay. Cock my right. <laughs> uh, and Trevor, yourself? Like we had some pauses, then me and Basal will look at each other and then just keep on playing. And then we look at Martin with his drum solos and then me and Basal look at each other and like, okay, is he going to go on or do we need to stop? Or and then we're just going on like fucking mad. Uh, but that's all that's probably all part of the energy though that's 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 yeah, the, yeah. that's the part of live music that you know those, those looks like some people won't notice but it's just the, those looking at each other like what the fuck is going on <laughs> we, we, we've all all had those moments on stage we're like what what are we actually doing again but then it came out like it works for some reason and then we just keep on playing and then ended eventually did. like <laughs> And, and, and Martin, like, how, have you had any sort of stories behind the kit that have just... Um, as a drummer, man, you always eat your finger over the drums and you just see fucking blood everywhere. And, like, you see crazy people in the corner dancing there and stuff like that. So not, it's not that crazy, but it's laughable to see. <laughs> I feel like as a drummer, though, you are you're kind of hidden behind the band, like, you, you kind of have that sort of that grace window where no, if you fuck up really badly or something dodge happens that like no one's really going to notice because yeah, you, you're kind of hidden behind the, behind the kit, behind everyone. Yeah, it's true, man. But you know, if the drama fucks up, everybody hears it, man, but not everybody on the ground hears it. Only we as a band hear it on stage, but it's not that big of a deal. That is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> If you fuck up really bad, it's a big deal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rule number one, don't fuck up. <laughs> sounds, it sounds like a rule that's just with the nature of live music is, is not really good. <laughs> but we don't, Honestly, we don't fuck up. We just end up playing and then we just, we fall into it and it just happens, you know. It's, it's like magic. It's kind of fucking cool. I feel like the mark of a good musician though, and guys who have been playing together for a while, is it's not the fact that you make a fuck up it's how you recover from it and that is the mark of a an experienced yeah, musician yeah. being able to recover from those fuck ups where it looks intentional it looks like it was something that was supposed to happen or you know that oh well they're, they're prepared for this somehow i mean martin started playing drums at the age of like let's call it six years old but it wasn't drums you know he played on on coffee tins he used to fill them with sand and sugar and rice to make all these weird like, noises and have different sounds out of his, his fake drum kit. And he used to play them and he used to play on pillows. And the day he got his drum kit, I think he was 16 years old. <laughs> yeah. He just fucking played them like a professional, dude. He just, he was the glue that like started and, and helped this whole thing to just sound better, you know? Uh, out of the three of you, out of the, the three siblings, who was the one who started music first? I guess it was me, man. I was bought my first drumstick on a grade four. I don't know. Yeah, and I just started playing shit on earphones. I mean, we were always involved with music, you know? Like, our grandfather yeah, yeah. used to listen to rock and roll, like Midnight Oil and Pink Floyd and all that stuff. And we used to trip out on that shit as young, as young kids, you know? He used to drive these old classic cars and we used to chill in these classic cars and listen to rock and roll and just... You know, it was, it was great. I got my first guitar at a very young age. Martin wasn't born yet, but I wasn't interested in those things. You know, I was a little boy. I played rugby. I was active. I was naughty, all that shit. It wasn't until in my teens that I started listening to, like, serious music. And you know, I just fell in love with it, you know. And, and then I obviously influenced my brothers. And we all just 
grew up in a room together and we influenced each other and just created something fucking great, you know. And that's cool. It sounds like your grandfather had like a big impact on you guys becoming musicians, as you as you said. I still write <laughs> songs on my on a guitar that my grandfather gave me, and it's an acoustic guitar. And most of the tunes that acoustic acoustic tunes were written on on that guitar, and then we went to the studio and recorded it. You know, so me and Marcel will pick up that one guitar and we'll record it. Now we use different guitars and all those things, but I've still got my tool. You know that. He gave me years ago. I love it. Came a long way. I, I feel like musicians always have that, that one instrument that they they gravitate back towards. It's like their their songwriting instrument. Like I, I find, particularly with guitarists, it's it's always like this old beat up acoustic. That that's the one that they have the most creative ideas on for some reason. It seems to be this I weird consistency around guitarists. I can't I can't consider myself a guitarist. I only play the acoustic to write music. I'm not nearly as good as Brandon or Marcel. I mean, Marcel is on another fucking label. He like plays <laughs> celestial shit, you know, like other space stuff. We are I, I just play an acoustic. I play a normal open chord, a bar chord here and there, just to write a lyric, and then I'll take it to Marcel, and then he transforms it into something massive, you know. Because he's got the ability to do those things. I find that I, I, I'm not sure if I should be grateful that Marcel isn't here because it would be very confusing with the trying to. <laughs> the the band, every person in the band, works phenomenal in their roles. Every person fits and their personality works with every single thing that works with Paloma. Marcel is phenomenal at playing the guitar. And, and I mean, Martin is an insane drummer from a young age. But I mean, when we come together and we start writing some tunes and it all starts with a small riff or even just a drum beat or a bass lick, and it just turns out into something bigger than we imagined. And it fucking freaks us out all the time because we, it's great starting something from scratch and then involving it into something great. You know, you feel good after that. No, definitely. It's a good feeling. Addictive. <laughs> I think it is like for a lot of guys the driving force behind what makes them continue music. You know, it, it, it is like you said, it's addictive. It is a drug. Once you're into it, I don't think there's very few things that can make you happier. No, it's it's also, it's also very important not to lose that. You know, it's and it, we've only been in this, we've only been a band for over about two years now. But I mean, it feels like we've been a band forever because we it just works. There's no other way of, of explaining it. It's just meant to be, you know? It's one of those things. Yeah, definitely. I have a lot of respect for myself as a guitarist as well, though. Like, I watch a lot of his videos, and I've actually had him in one of my own. And there's such a, such a solid dude, such a solid musician. Yeah, professional about everything, really. He's the only guy in the band that can actually read music. <laughs> and it helps sometimes. You know? <laughs> we never use it because we never, we never need to, but... It helps sometimes. Like, he'll just sort out all my mistakes. <laughs> it's funny because, it's, you know, even though he's the only one in the band you can do so, it's still one more than most bands have. Exactly. <laughs> like, let's be honest there. Like, there's a, a lot of bands in general, like, a lot of the guys just work off a feel. Like, uh, you know, especially, like, rock and roll. It's less common these days. Like, a lot of them are more clued up and a lot of them are more technical. But in general, like the essence of rock and roll was just to pick up an instrument and play whatever comes to mind and whatever whatever you feel. As long as it's sick as fuck, it sounds good and it gets people to groove, that didn't fucking matter. It didn't matter if it was technically correct or not. That's Marcel, dude. I mean, sometimes he doesn't even fucking plug in an, a pedal. He just fucking tunes it and plays it with his fingers, dude. And it freaks people out. <laughs> he melts faces. He's a genius. I, I, one of my favorite things just from speaking to you guys is just like how much you hype each other up like it's it's fantastic you're just as a as a band each of you are just such a fan of each other member and it, it's great because you've spoken about like your other members with nothing but love and just like excitement at their abilities and what they're capable of Blumen, it's a vibe we're a family you know just because three bro- three of the guys are brothers brothers it doesn't mean the other two guys are brothers as well you know we've we're this big family now it's fucking cool, you know. Trompy, any box on Bender. <laughs> now, something I wanted to touch on, just speaking about like your your music and the sort of the recording process. You know, you guys recorded your your first EP with uh, the Fun Coke Studios. What was that experience like? 
It was cool because it was our first. It was our first time in Cape Town. Actually, we've never been to Cape Town, and we've never been on a plane. So it was our first time on a plane. First time in Cape Town. It was cool. We enjoyed it. And was the so was there a particular reason why you guys chose Hongkong Studios? Was it just the guys that best suited the the vibe that you were going for? So, so as a band starting out, we we wrote our first EP. Those seven tunes we've recorded, we we wrote those those tunes in two weeks. We booked our first gig at an illegal dacha bar in Porch with no PA, only our fucking instruments. And we wrote those seven tunes to go and play those tunes at the gig because we were determined to go and fucking play that gig. We decided that we're going to go and record those seven tunes, but we obviously need someone with experience and someone that is, that is vibrant and someone with energy to record our tunes. So we went down to Funk Coke Studios. We all put our money together. We paid for our plane tickets and we, we went down there. We stayed with, with one of my friends in Stellenbosch at his, uh, what do you call it? Student communal house. Fucking lived on, on, on instant oats and two minute noodles. It was amazing. <laughs> we fucking enjoyed it. It's the most fucking rock and roll thing I've heard all day. <laughs> ah, it's fun, dude. We had a, we had a full, we had a, we had a Ziploc bag with weed that we threw away because we couldn't take it on the plane. <laughs> Did you guys only realize this when you got to the airport? We, we, yeah, it's like at the fucking airport and we waited at the airport for like five hours because our flight was only at eight o'clock in the evening, dude. It's just five fucking rock and rollers rocking up to an airport and realizing, fuck, we've got drugs in our bag. <laughs> we just, <laughs> someone didn't take this through. <laughs> we we got rid of the evidence and we we took the journey back to Joburg, excited with our first tunes that we recorded, thinking we're gonna take over the world, and we still feel that way. Yeah. It's just we're a lot fucking better now, you know. We've, we've grown into our sound. No, I'm stoked to hear that. Are you guys, do you guys have any plans to come to Durban? Are, are we gonna like ever hear you down here at some point? What's the what's the deal? Does Durban even have any places to gig at? Because I don't even ever see anyone playing Durban actually. A very I mean, like very, a very few left. There's the uh, the Winston, which is like one of the the old staples. Um, I don't know if you guys ever visited the Bow back in the day. Bohemian, oh, no. no, I think I think we're too young for that shit. No, I think that place closed down <laughs> before we got the chance to go there. I've, I've experienced that feeling of hearing of these legendary venues and then they're, they're gone before you got involved. Yeah, like uh, we've heard about these event places, you know, like all these crazy fucking places people have played before, but a lot of places closed down due to COVID. So we had to find our own way of getting exposure, you know, playing everywhere. We'll just fucking blow it all put a drum kit and a guitar next to the fucking flea market and we'll just play as long as people are looking at us and seeing that we're fucking playing some cool tunes, you know? Well, with the way it's going in Durban, that's that's how it's going to have to be at some point. <laughs> but, but... We'll, we'll play at the toll gate. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's great. The, um, what I was trying to say though is that the Winston was very similar to, or is very similar to like the the, the bow in general, and it's that's one of the few places in Durban that caters to to musicians at all these days, or musicians of every type. So you know, kind of like how how rumors is where just almost any type of artist can play there, and you know there isn't necessarily a, a restriction on what type of music that they're letting be played there. So in, in Durban, metal, rock and roll, those sort of things are a very you know, sort of niche market these days, and that was one of the few places that any band could just fire up and play. Well, I mean, I feel like people are getting back to partying again because fucking COVID restricted everyone from living for a few months and. I, I I think when the when the album is finished in the near future, we are definitely going to plan a tour all the way down to Cape Town and just try and play everywhere. We just want to take over South Africa and also not the because we're fucking amazing. <laughs> That'd be sick. I'd, I'd be yeah. stoked to see that. Yeah, it'll be fucking cool. We'll definitely come and play in Durban. Well, at, at, at some point, you know, between myself and the super, you, you, you should be able to find some form of accommodation if you still don't have anything down here. But yeah, we'd love to see you guys down here. We'd love to see the energy that is Blomworth down in Durban. That'd be amazing. Yes, holy shit, that was just in unison. <laughs>
What's up guys, Future Marcel here. Due to a technical difficulty, the last part of the episode where Blomoet explain where you can find them on their platforms and all that sort of stuff is unfortunately gone, so I am here to fill that part in. You guys can find Blomoet just about anywhere on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everything under Blomoet. It is a very unique name. I'm also going to play out with one of the songs. For some reason, these lads requested a song from a different band. They want it to be different. But due to some copyright restrictions, only these kind of things, I'm unfortunately going to go against that wish. Guys, I'm sorry. Please don't beat me. I hope you guys had as much fun listening to this as I had making it. And all the best. Marcel from Sludge. Artio. Artio.